All right, so we're going to be talking with Matt vs. Politics on moralizing the economy. I'm pretty sure basically it's going to be focused on what minimum wage and whether or not rules are moralizing the economy because that's the take I saw him give a while back. I actually couldn't find the TikTok. I don't know if I'm bad at looking or if he took it down or what's happened, but like he's made it, he has a ton of content since then because I just haven't been really, really interested, interested in making political content. But I saw him give a take where he said that you shouldn't be moralizing the economy by putting rules into it to enforce outcomes that you think should come out of it. But I think that's kind of like, as Lost is saying, like, I don't think that people should be able to enforce rules on other people while still wanting instances of that. Like, I'm sure there's still plenty of places where he wants us to make laws in the economy where, which would demonstrate that either just making a law in the economy either isn't moral or isn't like moralizing it or that it is moralizing it and there are some instances of moralizing the economy that he is completely comfortable with so that's basically kind of where we're going to go down and at the end we're going to address what his title on abortion is and whether it accurately demonstrates what his beliefs on the position are it's about five now so we should we should be expecting him in any minute oh shit wait hold up i need to drink this more presidentially yeah, can you hear me now? No is everything? Uh, yeah, I can. I could hear that. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Bet, bet. Okay, so let's start again. Hey, Matt, welcome in. How's it going? Pretty good. So we're talking economy, morality, moralizing it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you said you want me to go ahead and. I think you said introduce myself and then get my position. Yeah, because I think most people on my channel probably have a hot take on who I am. So yeah, just give yourself a fresh introduction. It's been a while since we talked. And then just your yeah. general position on what we're talking about today. All right. Um, so my name is Matt. Um, my username or anything that I use on social media um, or any of my platforms is Matt versus politics. Um, I basically just talk politics and philosophy breaking news that type of stuff that's that's all i really talk about sometimes i'll cross the waters into other stuff but usually it's always connecting to politics um yeah i think that's that's pretty much it for me i guess that uh, label wise i call myself a liberal you know very generally um and then my position on this is um i don't know how I, how i've explained it in the past and so it might have been confusing to anyone who mm -hmm. um argue who ever seen any video whatever videos i've sent on it but i but the basic take is that um, we're we're never going to be able to find like a perfect like economic system that would uh, that would fit like a moral like good in every single way or whatever. And so acting like uh, any economic system is going to be this perfect moral system, I think, is uh, very silly. Um, I mm -hmm. think that usually when I talk about this, I'm talking about socialists or commies who love to moralize the economic system and what I think is a like rhetorically hilarious way um and so I, my position is basically i think it's fair to obviously moralize the outcomes of any said economic system but to say like oh you know this economic system is wholly morally wrong or wholly morally righteous is is uh i think hilarious um so that's that's basically uh my take in a nutshell i think okay Okay, that's that, that's a pretty fair take. I because the one video I had seen from you before, you were more of the uh, at least what I understood from the take was that you were more of the stance that anyone who is focused on moralizing the economy is essentially wasting their time. But I think that you do agree with that stance because you do think that it is fair to try and moralize the outcomes of an economy, which means that even though an economy itself is not a moral creature. As a tool in a society, we still it's still fair to apply certain aspects to it or certain rules or regulations to get a more moral yes. outcome. Yes, Perfect. yes, for sure. I yeah, I I probably I probably uh looking back, I think, because I had a lot of people that were like, oh, are you serious? I, I think I probably should have phrased it better because I I do think that the way people talk about moralizing systems is really like fallacious, I guess to to uh for lack of a better term but mm -hmm. um but i probably should have probably should have clarified what i meant um i think you can try to make any like economic system uh 
more moral. Um, but that's because I, I think we should be looking at the outcomes instead of just being like, oh, you know, capitalism is morally wrong or anything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I get that. Just saying like capitalism is evil, socialism is evil, communism yeah. is evil, instead of that looking at the actual outcomes and what we can do to mitigate it. For sure. Exactly. So then let's look at a, a practical uh, application of that. Uh, minimum wage. Uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. you would like to not have one federally. Federally, yeah. Um, I mean, so like, okay. The whole, the whole, the meta take, I guess, is I, I would be okay with any like, uh, like, like twelve dollars an hour or anything like that. I think that I think that probably makes sense. Federally, I think probably. Yeah, yeah. Federally, I'd be okay with it because I think it's. I think it. I think it makes more sense than like fifteen or like the twenty or whatever that people uh, that are, are really crazy are, are proposing. And then politically, it's probably much more viable. Um, but like in an ideal world, I, I don't think people actually care. A lot of the people like talk about so much about minimum wage. I don't think uh, they actually care that much about minimum wage. And so, um, in my ideal world where tax policy is king, uh, you know, it'd be cool to just not have a, a federal minimum wage at all. Leave it up to the states, and then and let's pick up people on the back end with tax policy. Mm -hmm. So when you said that people don't really care, you, because you had a couple different points in there, but when you said that people don't really care. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you saying that in regards to like which people and what do they like? Why would they? You think they don't care about minimum wage? So what I'm referring to mainly is there's a lot of people who say like, uh, don't people deserve like a uh, like a living wage? You know, isn't mm -hmm. that like isn't that like what people morally you know uh, ought to have? And when I'm hearing these people, I know what their I know what their you know where their conclusions lie morally. And they don't lie with wages oftentimes or, or livable wages. They don't, they don't, I don't think any of these people actually care about like a living wage on a moral level. Most of these people just care about like how these people who we want to give a, a, a living wage, they care about these people having like certain basic needs like healthcare or a good education or something like that. And you don't have to do that through a living wage. In fact, it doesn't even make as much sense to try and uh, do it through a wage anyway because or at least on a on a government level because that's like that's you're now artificially like uh manipulating the labor market um and so i, well, I, just, I think I, I think there's a disconnect right there because when you say they don't actually care about the living wage what they care is the life they can get with the living wage i feel like that's i feel like that's somewhat somewhat deceptive somewhat beating around the bush because if there was a way that you could get that living wage or you could get that true means of life without a living wage then i feel like they would also be in support of sense like in a sense of that or they would be just in support of finding some way to make sure they get above the minimum but having a living wage seems to be the most fair way and keep keeps people um motivated to continue to go to work because one of the, i was of the thought because i didn't know another place you go to when you don't get it from your wage is you get like some sort of universal basic income from the government and sure. that is something that like I was somewhat on board with, but it feels like you need you need like, you need someone's income to come from a wage because at the end of the day that does motivate some sense of work. And I'm like all down for like supplementing things on the end for people who don't have them. But I think that primarily we do kind of have to focus on wages being what supplies that standard of life. Mm -hmm. So so I understand all of that. I do. But so you say it's deceptive to kind of say that like people don't care about a living wage because they would probably be in support of like the tax policy type of stuff that I would be in support of. But don't you think it's also kind of deceptive for, for people to actually care about the type of things that I would care about, but say, oh, it, people deserve a minimum or a living wage. That's where I think the deception is, is that people people act like the living wage is like the end all be all when in reality, it's like that's not really the case. Well, I think it's definitely the most pragmatic because I don't see us getting oh. anywhere near a universal basic income setup, especially with mm -hmm. our current setup, well, especially with our current um, political breakdown with who's in the Senate and who's in the House. I don't think mm -hmm. that anything like anything like that extra support from the government isn't coming anytime soon. So I think that it is uh -huh. much more reasonable to have people say that when we want people to have the fair outcome instead of just saying well i just want a fair outcome is doing that they're actually going the pragmatic step of saying this is the best way to take that fair outcome um yeah i would say it's more pragmatic that's why i i would be totally okay with like a 12 dollar uh increase i think would be cool um but like also like 
I don't think so. You said like UBI is basically like uh, it's going to be less pragmatic than trying to raise the minimum wage, but but I don't think UBI is the only way you have to do this. Like for instance, like I think. I don't think people would care nearly as much about trying to raise the minimum wage to have a living wage if we had like a better healthcare system, which we're working on. If we had, um, you know, like better infrastructure, which is something we're trying to work on. If we had like better education, which I don't know if people are talking about that as much lately. Well, no, that's in the infrastructure plan. Um, mm-hmm. that, like if we had these things flushed out, or we had like, you know, we have welfare, and and we had uh, if we have like good welfare policy, I don't. I don't know if people would uh, care as much about the minimum wage. And all those things are things that we are doing and working on right now. And so I don't know if the UBI is necessarily the only way you have to do that. So then you would be like using stronger welfare to be like the main support for people's incomes. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like an income with, or it's like a wage, but like without a corporation, basically. It's the government, right? So then that would like shift uh individual businesses to instead of having to pay what people need to survive they would be competitively paying just for people's interest um they'd be paying like based on the mar- the on the labor market yeah now but how would we avoid a situation where like businesses all know that you're going to get what you need to live at the end of the day so they only end up paying you like you know a couple cents or something like that how would you <laughs> justify that would you say that, like that's okay uh-huh. like w- if we were to have all the other things taken care of what is the minimum a business could legally contract a person for you know well so would you still so, have something like that in place well sure but it would be on a on a state level i've never i've never said that i'm against like a state minimum wage and in mm-hmm. fact that would probably be pretty cool because now you you have uh like a competition between states now like now if you have a state where like the minimum wage is like you know six dollars an hour and you have another state where it's like fifteen dollars an hour and mm-hmm. uh you know the cost of living isn't like california level then like you ha- you might see people like start to move towards those states and then the other states that are like you know they have their minimum wage set at like six they're like okay well we probably need to like raise it a little bit you know we need to get the pr- with the program and kind of try and set our minimum wage i mean closer they, to they would they would price. they would be financially incentivized to keep their state minimum wage as low as possible if they know okay so like here, here's how that would kind of break apart. would they know no, they, they absolutely, it would be totally financially incentivized to do so. If the state, if the government, if the federal government is going to come in and fill in whatever gap is left f- to survive after the state's minimum wages, instead of enforcing their own, if they just give the people the money directly, then the states could have as low of a minimum wage as they want. And basically the, the wealthier states, the, which typically are the more blue west or coastal states, would be paying for that person's survival more so than the state being responsible of giving them a fair wage. And if we were to switch to a mode where everyone were to get that, then that starts to become less of an issue. But when we still have a situation where wages are giving people their primary income, their primary leg to stand on, and then states can have them be as low as they want with the federal government filling in the rest of that leg, there is no reason for a state to ever have it set high enough to live on because that will just cost the state its own... um, It'll just cost it business when the federal government can supply all the businesses that would usually be non-viable and would fail because they, they just don't bring in enough money to validate their so, work. So I don't entirely agree because, okay, so for instance, like if we were doing a UBI, I could envision this type of world a little bit more. But what I'm saying is like, so for instance, like with the, the situation that I set up, you have a state that has like $6 uh, dollars and then you have a state that has $15. Um, okay. Even if we have a lot of these programs, like maybe like good welfare programs, or we have like the education and healthcare set up, uh, system set up a little bit better um, to where people are getting what they need without having to have like a living wage set by the federal government. Even with that, you have people who are always going to be like looking for their best, best interest when it comes to wages anyway. And so if you have people leaving the state because other states are going to be able to pay them more, like your your state's going to be financially incentivized to raise your minimum wage still like i i understand that no i I fully understand that argument but how many people do you think have the means to move states if they're already on a minimum wage that can't support the standard means of life well it depends i mean if you you wait 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 does does it depend if you're not getting paid enough to actually support your regular means of life, which means you're foregoing some bills, you're foregoing meals regularly, there's a lot of stuff you can't afford. You think that person has the ability to pick out a new place to live, 
pay like two months rent on advance, put all their stuff in a movie. Like these are these are expensive tasks. I feel like moving sure. isn't an option for people who are on like the minimum wages that we agree don't support the standard of life. So I, I know. So just to be clear for, for anyone that may listen to this, I know that we are totally in like idealized world right now, but um, obviously, so yes, it would be expensive um, at least somewhat to move, um, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to move like, uh, you know, multiple states across or something like that. Totally understandable. Get that. However, um, like to act like, like everyone, like there's going to be a ton, a ton of people that are going to be like, uh, you know, missing meals and stuff like that. They're going to be that low on the register uh, as far as like uh, income security. I mean, we're already in this idealized world where like, you know, you have a lot of things already met by the government and the mm -hmm. wage is helping you support your life even more. And so like, yeah, I, I can obviously imagine some people are going to have trouble even moving. Um, but like, I, I think to act like, like, like no one's going to move to states that have better, like higher minimum wages set uh, on their state level. I, I don't know. I feel like that's just, I, I feel like you're obviously going to see people move. But yeah, but that's in the idealistic world where everyone already has a basic means of income. In that world, there is nobody who's actually struggling who is an American because they would have all of their basic needs met. Sure. And, and, but, but like, do you do you have a, like a pragmatic solution for the current one we're in? Because we're currently trying to decide whether or not we should raise the minimum wage or have it lowered. I feel like since you agree that there should be like some there could be some use to a federal minimum wage right now mm -hmm. i'm trying to figure out how can you how can you rectify that that is acceptable but that we also shouldn't have one because i think that's kind of where i'm breaking down because i kind of think we kind of agree that it only doesn't it only wouldn't work or we only wouldn't need it in an idealized world but what about the world that we currently live in um so you're okay let me make sure i understand the question you're saying okay. how do i rectify the fact that i would like an idealized world with no minimum wage, but I'm okay with having one right now. Is that the question? No, 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 that's not the question. The question is, is okay. that you're saying that you could see a good future where we have mm -hmm. a minimum wage. So you're just saying that the one where we don't have it is better? Um, I mean, yeah, probably. I, I, well, I, think I mean, I would, like I, okay, yeah, go. go I was just gonna say, so like, on a, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. So like on a very, very pragmatic level, I am a radical pragmatist on a very pragmatic level. It's obviously just like, let's just make it like $12 an hour and let's all go home. Okay. On a federal mm -hmm. level. Um, I, obviously I don't see a problem with that, but like we also need to get some other things passed, which will only push us further to this, um, to this idealized world where we're going to have a lot more uh, government programs, which I think a lot of people agree on. And at that point, I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't really see the need and like, like, going crazy about uh, a living wage because in that even in that world i can imagine i, I mean i don't know about you but i wait, even, wait in, in the world where we world, don't have yeah. that stuff no if we do get that stuff because okay. we're all work, we're working on it right now even if we get to that world where we have you know better healthcare system better education system good welfare policy stuff like this even if we get to that world i can still imagine a world where people are freaking out and saying we need we need to raise the minimum wage even higher and higher and higher because I mean, that's that's obviously something that, like, politically looks really good for politicians. And so at that point, like, if we have all we have a lot of things that we're doing government programs for. Why do we need to keep fighting over like, oh, we need like to raise a minimum wage again and again and again? Like, like at this point, what's the what's the point in having that? I don't know. Well, it just seems I mean, really silly. I think the reason right now that it's so popular to argue over it is because a lot of people are feeling how low it is. And the reason that we still need it is because of the current political atmosphere. There is no way you're going to get enough of the country to sign on to giving everyone those bills. So right now, there are the people. What a lot of people des actually need and are relying on is the paycheck that they work for to be big enough that they only need one or at most two jobs. And I think that that is actually very, very reasonable. I would like to get to a world. I mean, I, I'm on the edge if we could get to a world where we have universal basic income paying for everything. Because as I said at the beginning, I think that there's a motivation issue with individuals where if you get paid what you need to live, 
why would I ever stop binging Netflix? Why would I ever go out and commit a job where I have to put up with people I don't like, with customers I don't want, for money at the end of the day I don't need? It, to, the, to me, there's a disconnect there that doesn't all the way make sense. So that world seems interesting, and I'd like to like more investigation into it. But for me, I think what makes most sense is that to keep the minimum wage, and it does constantly need to be raising, constantly. You're always going to hear about it raising, even if it's... Even if it's really decent, you will hear about it needing to go up because in the future it it will need to go up. It just so what we should have is a a minimum wage that is tied both to inflation and the or I guess just the cost of living because if you tie it to the cost of living, that will naturally rise with inflation and as goods go up and all that. And then every few years you can have it be like maybe even three to try and keep it somewhat depoliticized because one is too much and two is every congressional year. So I think three is a is a decent breakup and every three years you can have the minimum wage be reevaluated at whatever the current cost of living is until we get the rest of the um, government stimulus that you would need to offset it. And if you want to include it in that number, I think that would be fine because then you could say, hey, at the end of the day, we gave you what you needed. We gave you the protection you needed to make it, and that's okay. But I think that that is why we do absolutely and probably will always need a federal minimum wage because states will also be incentivized to push their financial burden onto other states, as usually has been the case with poorer states. So, so one of the things you said is, that I'm, I have to key off is, is that you said okay. we don't always have to end up raising the minimum wage because uh, mm -hmm. it should be tied to inflation and cost of living. This yeah. is my this is like my problem with a federal minimum wage is that it's so far removed from being localized that how can you possibly like have a good analysis of what the cost of living is for 50 states? That's insane to me that we can say mm -hmm. like, hey, like this is the cost of living for all these 50 states. This is a massive piece of land and like. We recognize, I, I know that we all recognize that like the cost of living is totally different from um, from state to state. I mean, like it's just always going to be, and even from local area to local area, but I mean, obviously I mean, doing it's, it it's, in some way from local areas. It's totally I different, know. but they all have the same inputs. They all, the, all the same inputs are how much does it cost to have a house or an apartment or whatever, how, how to have, you know, room, how much does it cost to eat? How much is power, water, electricity? And I feel like over a state, I think there are always going to be poorer sections, but over a state, that'd probably be very easy to generalize. So I am very open to the idea of having it be st different state by state. I, people in Idaho oh. don't need as much as the people in L.A., but sure. the federal minimum wage should enforce that it is tied to whatever that state's uh, cost, lowest cost of living is. So that way that state may have a different price. They're still federally mm -hmm. enforced to support it. That way sure. th they get what they need at their price point. And they also can't skirt around and push the burden on to other states who are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. And well, and that's fine. Like I can under, I can even understand saying like, hey, it's okay to have a federal minimum wage and then try to like leave it more up to the states. But recognizing that like, you know, it's going to be hard to uh, generalize a whole country what the cost of living is for the whole country. So we at least need to have like a bare minimum on the federal level. I can understand that argument. But if that's the argument we're going with, Fifteen dollars cannot be it. I, I mean, that's just that's going to be too high. I mean, oh well, well, any, I, I minimum, any federal minimum wage under this design would never have an explicit number put into the federal number. It would always be, it, it would it would functionally be a function. It would be an equation, basically. I thought, uh, sorry, oh. I, I yeah, I laughed at my use of the word function there twice. It does it okay. works twice? <laughs> I but yeah, basically, you yeah, you'd say your oh, your cost of living is this much in Alabama, your housing is this much in Alabama, mm. your food is this much in Alabama. Therefore, in Alabama, it is based on all of this, divided by whatever number, eleven dollars an hour. So that way, you know, working forty hours a week, you make you you can go home and sleep with the other forty hours you have. I'm pretty sure forty hours is half of a full week. Right, it's 80 hours a week, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think if you give up half of all of your living time, you that should be all you have to give up. And I think that's uh -huh. fair. Um, and that's, I can I'm, let's go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm long winded. You know this about me. You've talked to me before. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm bad about this sometimes. Um, I can understand that much more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that 
if that was the end goal and like a uh, very realistic setting, I'd be okay with that. That seems like pretty fair. Um, and it seems like it's much more uh, fleshed out than just saying like uh, $15 for the whole country and end the story. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I don't have any problem with that. I think that would be an interesting to try and uh, uh, work out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The $15 thing, it was like, at, part of me was on board with it, but it felt big. And then like people ran numbers mm-hmm. and said, well, like if it charted since as always it should be like 22 dollars but then like some of those numbers turned out to be weird i get that like we should be asking for more but Mm -hmm. as a bare minimum i think it's just important that nobody has to like nobody who's going to work every like five days a week should have to miss a meal like if you Mm -hmm. if you go to work five days a week that should you should that's good you know and i think that when people get stuck on trying Mm -hmm. to moralize this living wage it's just because that is Right now, that's the only pragmatic way to live is to just have a job. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of um, the point of the government is just kind of to support the people in that, you know, defend them. Yeah. So, is there, oh, crap. Well, there was something you said. Oh, you said, um, yeah, oh, there's two things. The first thing you said mm-hmm. was that, like, that some, did, ran some, num- some people ran numbers and said, like, oh, it should even be, like, you know, $22. I think uh, it was Tlaib mm-hmm. that was and throwing this out on Twitter or something yeah. like that. But then it and, turns out uh, that only like includes the numbers if you include the growth of the tech industry, which is mind boggling. Exactly. Huge. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's I, I've heard. Yes, the the counter arguments I've heard to that is basically that is that like that when we're talking about productivity and how like oh you know productivity has gone up this much so it be should be twenty two dollars uh, an hour. I mean, the problems I've heard at least is that yeah. It, those productivity numbers often do not <laughs> aren't really reflective of like the the fast food industry uh productivity it's just like it, it yeah. throws a bunch of it's very generalized productivity which can be a problem it, um, well, always confused me growing up because i was just like wait how did they get more productive like do they put out more burgers per minute which does make some sense but it's also like not they they don't put out 200 times more burgers per minute it's exactly yeah. Yeah. And then there was something else you said about how we should always be asking for more, I guess, on a minimum wage level. Um, Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Well, just because at the end of the day, minimum wage, in my mind, is just Mm -hmm. there. So you work the minimum amount you can to survive. Maybe you don't get to have a super comfortable life, but you just get to have enough to survive. And then Mm -hmm. if the cost of survival is constantly going up, then simple logic, minimum wage must also always be going up. Okay, so what can't we? Uh, so just going back for one one more time, just one more yeah. time. Can we imagine a world in which we have government programs that that are supplying you with your minimum amount of of uh, like uh, necessities to have a good you know life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In in that world, then I feel like it would be totally different conversation because now we're not trying to get someone to totally live off this we're talking about how much should your passion add to your life like how much does this passion of yours add to society and how much should that addition reflect onto your own personal gain and that but that's more of like um oh, there's a there's a specific word post post need post scarcity that's like a post scarcity okay. world yeah like star mm-hmm. trek universe where no one actually has to yeah. work you you get to do what makes you a more honest more rounded person and i want that world i just don't see the average person's desire to do what they want to do fully overcoming their desire to netflix binge yet we could uh-huh. easily get there we could probably get there within like 20 years you know people there's like i didn't expect over the last five years for people to change their minds as much on so many things so maybe we're even closer than i currently conceive but right Mm -hmm. now i just i you need some way to line up their incentive with with the financials just a little just somewhat i can understand that um okay is there any other questions you had about i guess like uh, economics and moralizing and all this stuff um no i as it may i try to sum up if i could if i sum up your position correctly then i don't have any questions oh okay um Um, all right so your position would be that you would like to get to a world where we can have people have their basic needs added in through federal assistance have the states be responsible 
so they can take care of their own economies for what would and wouldn't be a damaging minimum wage and then ultimately remove the need for minimum wage maybe if not just federally but hopefully in general because there are everyone is satisfied and they don't need that income to support themselves um <laughs> potential maybe maybe uh, that last part is a little beyond i don't even know if i i don't i don't even know if i would ever talk about like that kind of post scarcity world i don't know mm. if i'd ever talk about that that far but um yeah i mean like Yes, I think generally uh, that's pretty close. I think okay. my, my main goal is just trying to is trying to recognize or let people recognize that like like just putting like uh, slamming down like a federal minimum wage and saying like eh, well you know this this works for all fifty con- or all fifty states that, that I I don't see that as being an understandable position um, mm-hmm. for the most part. And so we need to we need to try and figure out something as far as government um, programs and, you know, how are we going to make this federal uh, versus state minimum wage work? I liked your idea, for instance, for sure. like I would be okay if we got to that. But yeah, I think generally speaking, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay. Yeah, I guess the only, only addition I would have is I could see myself accepting a flat number. If that flat number for the federal minimum wage to be like $12 or whatever it was, was the lowest it was in the poorest state but you know at that point you're not really doing stuff for the other states in fact you're kind of harming the bigger states so i think i kind of talked myself out of that one it should it shouldn't be a flat number okay i can understand yeah okay yeah yeah so i'm in i'm in agreement with you it should not be a flat number we should have some sort of changing statistic or changing value all right sure um well also was there any other questions you had about like the like the just that was minimum wage stuff but like any Mm -hmm. about like the moralizing of an economic system well i think we both kind of agreed with that really quickly in the beginning that we are okay with moralizing the out certain outcomes but that the economy itself isn't necessarily a moral beast but Mm -hmm. it's more of a tool that we just kind of have to use yeah Okay. Yeah, for sure. Are you, what are economically? What would you consider yourself? I'm just curious. Eco- economically, hmm. I would kind of consider. I am definitely. I would like to be a capital. I would like to own my own capital at some point and employ others. Mm-hmm. So I am a capitalist, mm-hmm. and I've been trying to consider how much more of the democratic <laughs> aspect I want involved. I'm trying to think like if I were to have my own company. How much of my control would I like to give up so that my workers could feel heard? But in a similar mm-hmm. to the state sense, like that communication might be what it takes to actually improve my profit. So okay. I am I am definitely a capitalist, but I'm curious to see how those social tendencies, I guess, would work. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I was I was I was just curious about that um no worries yeah it was i haven't thought about it for a while so it took me a second for sure for sure um do you want to you want to move on to that abortion question you had yeah for sure we we uh slid right through this so then let's uh go to the abortion thing or i guess more so your title on abortion you still identify as pro-life right um uh, so it, it's complicated. Well, let, let me hear the question and then I can explain sure. where I'm at. So my, my ultimate question, which I, I'm not all the way enjoying it, but I feel like it's the most honest way to ask the question is have you, have you corrected or have you changed your title on abortion, your pro-life pro-choice title? Have you changed or corrected that at all? What do you mean? Because uh, la- because when we spoke last time, you said that you were of the belief that it shouldn't happen, and you would like to get to a world where that it doesn't happen. But you understand that right now it does, and that choice should just be left up to the individuals involved. Which, from mm-hmm. my understanding, is one hundred percent the pro choice position. We would not like to see abortion done. We would like to get to a world where like contraceptives are used prevalent enough that there are no accidental pregnancies. But like that mm-hmm. statement could belong to both groups. Sure. Like, um, a pro lifer and a pro choicer could believe that. So I'm wondering like maybe maybe is there another position you have that delineates yourself as pro life? Yeah, sure. So so I guess um 
So I, I think back then I pretty much used like pro-life and pro-choice loosely because those are like the buzzwords. Now, I mean, if I was still taking the same position, I would probably like, I've, I've thought about it a little bit more as far as like label goes and like, and then what I've heard other people talk about. I probably would have said now that like morally I would consider myself anti-abortion and then like on a policy level, I would probably be considered pro-choice. Yeah. If that okay. makes sense. That makes sense. Uh huh. But, um, but the, I mean, uh, actually, I'm sorry. It doesn't all the way make sense. I'm, I'm okay. somewhat of an agreeable person. I have ticks I need to get over. Um, what doesn't make sense is that you are anti-abortion, but allowing mm -hmm. of abortion, I guess. Is that just kind of like, a, I accept that the world I live in isn't good, but I'd like to get to a better one? Yes, yes. Is that, isn't I mean, that a pro-choice position? Well, yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why I said policy-wise it would still be pro-choice, right? And you okay. could even call it pro-choice morally, too. But mm -hmm. you're, I think you also have to call it anti-abortion as well on a moral level. You could say it's morally pro-choice and anti-abortion. I don't know if those would ne necessarily, you know, contradict um, because I guess mm -hmm. my moral level obvious or my moral belief obviously has to influence my policy uh, belief as well. Um, and so, man, it's there's so many mm -hmm. loops and I guess, bounds you have to go through with this, I guess. But I guess it just depends on how confused. militant you are anti abortion. Like if you're just like casually anti abortion, <laughs> like I'm like I'm trying to think of like a flavor of yogurt I'm anti. Like, oh I'm not a fan of that, but I'm just not gonna do it. Like I guess that would make <laughs> like I, that would that would make yeah, they're they're definitely mm -hmm. non exclusive. That something could fall in that definition and retain both titles. Well, well now that well now that you're getting to that question, I guess I might as well mm -hmm. explain where I'm at now when it comes to abortion. So, okay. so when we talk, so okay, when we talk about um, my morality and abortion and all that, on a moral level, I've talked about this a lot. I don't know if you've seen my vegan arc lately, but I care about humans. That's what I care about. Full mm -hmm. stop. And so obviously, when it comes to a human, that's what I care about. And then. But, but the thing that I think a lot of people are going to miss is that, um, or a lot of people do miss when they uh, talk about how they care about humans, and then they want to talk about abortion, is that even if you care about humans, you have to try and figure out, um, you have to make a distinction of, like, when do we start valuing a human, and when do we end uh, or stop valuing a human? Uh, mm -hmm. You have to, you still have to make a moral justification for each of these. And I heard some pretty good arguments as of lately um about how mm -hmm. like uh, uh most people will probably say that the uh when we stop valuing a human is when they is the end of consciousness or the end of their conscious experience that's probably when most people will say hey that's when i morally stop valuing a human um mm -hmm. and so it wouldn't make as much sense to then say i don't start valuing a human at conscious experience but instead i start valuing a human at the beginning of human development which would be yeah. a con uh, conception right yeah because so you'd have that, to that, rectify why you're using two different parameters instead of one parameter exactly. for both ends exactly i that was a pretty good argument that's something that i've had to think through a little bit more and um and so morally uh it's you know <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it and also you know i don't really man i can't stand listening or talking about abortion as much these days because mm -hmm. it's so over overdone so i don't i don't really talk to think about it much anymore but i'm sure at some point i'm gonna come either side i'm i guess mm -hmm. i guess i'd probably be like right down the middle right now and i have to figure out which which side i'm gonna lean on on a moral level but either way at the end of the day when it comes to policy my policy position is still gonna end up being the same which is mm -hmm. uh in in like very in the very general sense right now on a policy level i think it's really understandable for us to number one like make contraceptives free or more accessible and then probably like set a set a, like a, a like a limit like a 22 week limit or like a first trimester uh, limit um i think a lot of people agree on those two policies and we should probably make those a policy regardless of like where i am morally mm -hmm. I can definitely uh -huh. respect that position because it's a it's a hard it's such a hard call, judgment call and it's it's somewhat arbitrary to try and say to enforce it on someone else with like the confidence of being correct. So I mean mm -hmm. I can definitely respect that like the policy wise you have to pull back 
And since you yeah. put yourself out there, I'll, I'll join you as well. My Currently, my hang-up is um, with the whole abortion thing is that even if it, we were to say grant uh, human life at conception, which somewhat biologically I do respect, even though I'm also of the camp where the conscious experience is what weighs more heavily for me, because a conscious right. experience is what I even have to value things with, so it's what I value most. But mm -hmm. even if they were to say have that conscious, I mean, I guess it's more, more because they don't have that conscious experience, that to force someone to do a pregnancy they don't want to do, like let's say like the one and a half months in, they're like, I'm not here for this. But like abortion's been, it's illegal, it's banned, so it's just not an option. And to the, the feats you would have to go through to try and keep them not stressed so the baby actually gets developed without any conditions, but in such a forced and restricted in such a way that they're basically in prison and can't do anything, or maybe even fully restrained to stop them from hurting themselves to damage that baby. I just see that as a, it's too Orwellian of a dystopian future. Like I can't accept that that would be a reasonable moral situation and therefore that is why i can't prescribe i can't force people to not have abortions mm -hmm. or i can't make abortions illegal in any sense because then like also every miscarriage is suspect now and so that's just kind of like I can, where i am no no i can definitely understand that position especially like with where our state is right now if we were in a if we were in, if we were in a world where we had like, cause I don't think we have this right now, but if we were in a world where we had like, like guaranteed paid maternity leave mm -hmm. and um, you know, you know, things where, where like, if you are poor and you are forced to have a baby, then you like have like the needs that you uh, are the necessities you need to like, uh, to take care of that baby without having like super, super bad financial or stress problems. Mm -hmm. Then like with, with, we're not in that world. And so uh, with us being in our world right now, yeah, I, I feel pretty, I, I don't know how I would ever feel with us being in our current state and saying that we have to like force abortions. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty mm. much in the same game. Or, or force, force pregnancies. Or force, or sorry. Yes. Force pregnancies. No worries. <laughs> right. These, these go along. Yeah. Dude, I don't know about mm -hmm. you. So I don't, this abortion is so funny because like uh, when it comes to morality i feel like i don't know how other people view this but like mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to abortion uh, uh on a or uh, on a moral level abortion is probably like the most like uh the most i've ever thought about something like in a moral sense i've thought mm -hmm. a lot about a, a lot of about a lot of things on a moral level especially economics but like abortion is like i've thought a lot about it and i i feel like i've realized that like there are like they're like tears of of this conversation. Like you have like the very like basic ba uh, Ben Shapiro esque like this is what I believe about abortion, and then like you get up next tier and it gets like a little bit more complicated. You get a, a little bit more into the the ethics of it, and then like it just like gets like deeper and deeper. It's like uh, I don't think people actually like appreciate how hard of a moral question it can be. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's no, it's, it's also huge. And then there's also the anti-natalists who bring up the fact that nobody nobody wants to be alive, and being mm -hmm. alive is, in fact, pain. And so who are you to right. force that on someone else? Which isn't a, a position I wholly, I don't really subscribe to all the way, but I do yeah. take some acknowledge in it is that, is that there will definitely be, like, some pain, some strife, some woe, depending on how we carry this out. So, yeah, it is really hard. Um, someone in my chat asked... Uh, does her male partner get a say? And my direct answer to that is no, because if he gets a say that like gets to override her say, because at the end of the day, it's 50-50. And if disagreement means no action and no action means no abortion, then he can do the exact situation of forcing her, even maybe a month and a half in, to do nine months of something that like absolutely changes your body physiology and has huge moral implications at the end that she didn't even want to start with. So, n mm -hmm. no, unfortunately, he does not get any say because she would effectively be the one with the body or the one in the quote-unquote uh, prison, forced to do what she doesn't want to do. Yeah, I that question is a little hard for me because, like, I think I think you could definitely make an argument that, like, uh, the father is going to end up experiencing some, like, uh, it's probably going to end up experiencing um, a lot of the financial strife that a mother would have once the baby is born. 
but the, mm-hmm. the father's just not going to experience the nine months of labor like that's he's just not um yeah. and it really yeah, changes your body like i didn't fully respect how different like it like it's never going to be the same right like and so yeah with all that it's just it seems like too much to force on someone else it, again for something that's not yet conscious so that's yeah. just kind of like that's my hard stop mm-hmm. yeah i don't know it's complicated i'm not like i'm just in like like uh limbo right now i don't know yeah but, uh, as far as the moral level goes but um for what a lot of people know. say or i mean i've heard one person say that i listen to a lot at destiny that he's like 51 yeah. percent one way but like 49 percent the other way because it's just like it is like a really hard thing to to cut yeah. and anyone who like i feel like makes it super obvious or super clear it feels even if you like may have thought about it for hours and hours and debated it hundreds of times like the harder your stances on it the less it feels like you're genuinely willing to listen yeah sure yeah, yeah. I, maybe maybe by the next time we talk um i'll have another position on it <laughs> <laughs> i like that'd it be, that'd, that'd be, be that'd be fun <laughs> yeah the the, um, mena- the menagerie of abortion ideas for sure for sure um, but yeah, I anyway, just kind of wanted to bring that... that up because, like, as I would like review, I'm one of the people who will like after a conversation, I'll sit in the shower and I'll have the conversation to myself like eight times, and mm-hmm. it was just that one part where how you identified as pro life, but w- for me, it just every single position rang pro choice. It just that really that's been rattling in my head for a while. I want you to know you've been living in my head rent free. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I you know it's surpri- it surprised me ever since I got on TikTok how how many people I have that effect on believe mm-hmm. it or not. <laughs> you know I saw you well, having the other thing up on your channel as I was going through looking for your more most recent takes on like moralizing the economy and all that and then I saw that um you had one asking people how like how much you had changed their minds and it's just I've been thinking about that a lot recently because I'm trying to do something on my channel where at the end of every week I ask a question and it's very simple question you know but it's just kind of one of those ones that like you you kind of have to work through like the one of the Mm -hmm. first ones we really had because the first time i had it i asked way too hard of a question and i was like dude continue this but start small um was like what makes something wrong and it can like it seems like that's like an obvious like oh well duh this is wrong but once you start to like bake into it you have to really work through that definition or else a lot of bad things aren't included or are justified Mm -hmm. and so yeah i've just been really liking that aspect of making people think yeah yeah no i i like that too um i took a break for a while from posting and then um i don't know once i came back um i still try to like make you know takes that actually make people think but uh Mm -hmm. i don't know i got i got a lot looser and i uh really just started kind (laughs) of kind of like trolling people and like really making enemies <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i saw, I don't know what I saw you chasing me. that one person for a debate i don't think you're gonna get it dude <laughs> no, i don't think that one's coming I went, into, I went into that knowing that she was gonna decline but i was having fun anyway so that's mm-hmm. what for sure all right but, well um, if, is there anything else you wanted to ask me today um i didn't have anything else um oh, but i'm sure there... i'm sure we'll get something yeah, may but, i ask but, you a question but... for my chat yeah that's fine um bearded monty wants to know does do you like papa guts content and takes mm, okay so that's a good question so mm-hmm. it was uh so I, t- I had a conversation with him about gosh it was like um oh it had to be it had to be like six months ago i think it was around christmas time oh, i didn't realize you um, actually ta- sat down and talked with him yeah yeah he was following me when he was on tiktok before he got banned too like um, <laughs> we, we kind of knew each other somewhat um but like, uh, so around that time, I felt like he was giving some takes that I probably would agree with. He's a big UBI guy, which I don't know how, mm. how we need some more data on that. But I mean, yeah. um, for the most part, his outlook on things as far as, uh, you know, in a, in a very general sense, I, I thought was okay. As time went on, I, I've started to disagree with them a little bit more. It seems like, uh, his, it seems like a lot of his takes are are really really general and i feel like he doesn't um it's not like, like a slam on him this isn't at least uh, but like because a lot of people are like this but i feel like a yeah. lot of times he doesn't have like this um like moral grounding um that really like kind of fleshes out all of his ideas um 
and like not even to like a, like a general sense. It feels like because I've had, I heard him. I did a review of one of his conversations. It was like a vegan conversation, and I just felt like I felt like he had never really thought about it before. And so like I've started to not like his takes as much uh, lately. I'm probably gonna mm-hmm. always be a little bit more lenient with his jokes than some people will, or at least some liberals will be. Um, but that's just because I, I don't know. I just I'm a little bit more lenient, but um, maybe that's the problem. But um, yeah, I mean. I don't like him as much as, or I don't like his takes as much as I used to. He's still a good mm-hmm. guy, but it's a long answer. No, it's all good. That was a, a full a full answer is better than a short answer sure. in my mind. But uh, yeah, no, honestly, I haven't gotten to listen to most of his takes because when I was still following him on TikTok, for I don't know why, but uh, it, the algorithm decided to only show me the ones where he would like dress up in like bathing suit and go totally top naked and just dance and i was like papa gut this can't be our relationship this can't be how i see you i'm out (laughs) well i had heard uh i don't remember who he was talking to but he had said something he was talking to someone about how like those videos for whatever reason his twerking videos would do the best and that's where he made a lot of his money at when he was on tiktok (laughs) and so so he tried to make those about like once a day (laughs) So, dude, TikTok doesn't make sense why. to me. Dude, I had one. The first time I realized TikTok didn't make sense is I posted two video game sniping clips back to back. One where I caught like six headshots in like 30 seconds. And then another one where I, I shot one person, but then I just put a bunch of text on top of it. And the one with the text blew up. And I was just like, wow, you're going to disrespect That's me like this, TikTok? <laughs> yeah. TikTok, man, I don't, I don't get the algorithm sometimes. So I've all, like ever since I've been on, like I know that there's tricks on like that. There's definitely tricks that you can learn on like how to like make videos that will definitely do somewhat better. But like mm-hmm. trying to figure out what that like what the one thing is to definitely make sure that like your videos always do somewhat well, um, like 10k plus. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know if there's any way to figure that out. The algorithm is just like I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, that's tough. Dude, what's weird? It's even weird is when you have someone you're like, oh, this person was huge, and then you feet sign one of their videos like super later on, and you haven't seen them for months. You're like, oh fuck, are you still alive? Like <laughs> I know, yeah, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Alrighty, man. Well, well, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it. We always have really good conversations. I look forward to. Them. I. This one was fun. Um. Yeah, like just hit me up if uh, if you you where do you do most of your polit- do you do a lot of political stuff? Where do you do it at? Honestly, I've ever since I did a I did a big summary of Trump's campaign right at like on the day he switched office, so like on January twentieth, and since mm-hmm. then I haven't done like I've talked with you a little bit, but I almost haven't done anything political. Just because mm. I don't feel like it gets as many eyeballs. And oh my god, writing that list like burnt my core out. And so I've mm-hmm. just kind of been focusing on games. And over summer, I guess I probably should have been dipping my toe in. Because I didn't have school. I had the free space. But whenever I do political right. stuff, it's mostly it's mostly on Twitch. But I'm mm-hmm. going to start putting it on YouTube more. Like all of our conversations are posted on my YouTube channel. And okay. I'm going to try and get more stuff up there regularly cool okay yeah because i was just asking because i know you see my stuff and that's where most of our conversations start and so Mm -hmm. i want to try and watch out for your stuff too and so i can uh maybe i don't make things i'm a reactioner (laughs) i'm a (laughs) yeah he's a reactionary yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's funny okay well i'll I'll be on the lookout okay bet i'll talk to you later man stay safe yeah i'll talk to you later yeah you too see you man I like that guy. He's a cool dude. All right, now let me ca- catch back up with the chat because I only called out a certain stuff because I wanted to make sure my conversation was with him and not with chat. Um, alarm turkey. I remember when that popped up and in the news. Thank you, cheeks. Um, well, between a woman and a doctor. Yep, yeah, male women. Opinion. Oh, not women. Opinion. Words. Learn what words are. Discuss between both parties is brutal yeah not discuss between both parties is absolutely brutal like if you thought if you got the news and then you were all just super excited and then you just got the next news that's hard that's hard but that's more of like a 
feel like it's more of a relationship type thing. You need to have communication with your partner. In the same way that, like, if someone were to sell something of yours or to change your, the location you live in, like, those, all of those are super major and it's rough. It's not quite the same to the magnitude, but it's, I think that's a, a communication thing between people. They can tear you apart later if you don't break up in the moment. I'm not all the way sure what you mean by that. It can tear you apart later. The the lack of discussion and the action. But then the break up in the moment part. Coming for them cheeks, clarify. Daddy gut was big. <laughs> he needed to put his regular pants on is what he needed. Alright. It's a shame sacrifice. <laughs> My final thoughts on the conversation. Uh, we basically, the, his position on abortion kind of turned out to what I thought it was. He's somewhat shifting on it. He's recognizing that there are certain beliefs that fall into both camps, so he's somewhat on the fence, but does take the pro-choice name pragmatically, which he did last time, but now instead of calling himself pro-choice, he calls himself anti-abortion. I mean, pro-life, he calls himself anti-abortion, which makes more sense and i understand the pain he has to be in for wanting to get to a post-abortion world while still allowing abortion now it's probably part of the conversation that we all need to be on because it's the only way we're going to get through it but i i respect him for trying to master that struggle um uh, minimum i summed that one up before so i'm not going to try to do it again because at fear of um not doing it correctly that's my exact opinion anti-abortion yeah but then but you still can't make it illegal though yeah, but you, you still can't make it illegal even with that position because that just causes you know backstreet abortions you know like the backstreet boys but except it's backstreet boys and girls wait no it's not i would like to thank everyone who is here everyone who played with me we had a ton of people here throughout the whole stream uh if you ever want to have anything you want to suggest see i am always open for input me, you know, would have messaged me, you can get me here, my Discord, exclamation point Discord, or just go underneath my little channel and click on one of the little Discord tabs. Um, I want to remind you that I do not know where you are, and I don't know what time it is for you when you're watching this. So I'd like to wish you a good morning, a great day, and a nice night. I hope to see each and every single one of you back in here real soon. But, until I do, Please remember to take it easy.